Okay, so it is a bit late at night. It is uh, 9.30 at night on a Sunday, and uh, I've got some other projects going on right now, but I can't really um, uh, get started with any airbrushing at this time of night. I just don't want to do that, especially because it's cold outside. Um, I'd like to get started on this just for the heck of it. I'm going to just slowly build on this as time goes on. I don't know how long it's going to take to build this, but uh, I'm just going to get started. No idea when you're actually going to see this uploaded, but uh, this is uh, Macross Destroid Defender. Now, I did do the, the Phalanx uh, last year, and that was really fun. So I would like to get started on this. Now the Phalanx, um, I had some leftover paint, and so I added some other paint to it to uh, to make this this nice color. I think it's a good match, and uh, it's, I think it's a bit better than what the instructions tell us to do. Anyhow, speaking of the instructions, let's take a look at what's inside. Now you'll see this is the uh, uh, the, the 15th anniversary of Macross, and you see a little mid-may. Uh, the cool thing about these is that they come with uh, little figures. So here are the instructions. It says to use Kaki, which is 81, but I've also blended in uh, 71. Let me see here. Okay, so I had a bunch of middle stone left over from the Spartan, and so I am going to mix it up, or actually this is what I already did, was I mixed it up with a bunch of khaki. So this alone, it kind of matches this, I suppose, but yeah, I like kind of like a, a combination of these two together. This, this, this color looks a lot nicer, I think. So... That's my little special mix, and that's what I'm going to be using. So this is, again, these are um, Mr. Hobby Aqueous. These are acrylics. So, uh, it comes with a little Minmay figure. That is cute. I would like to uh, paint this up as well. Now, I did do uh, uh, one of Melia. And uh, that, that, that turned out fairly nice, I think. Um, when my daughter was a baby, uh, the only thing I did was just painting up stuff like this. You know, like uh, Sheen from Area 88. Uh, I did some Melia figures. And um, what else? I did Kiriko from Votoms. That came with some Votoms kits that I had. Uh, so, yeah, these are really neat. Detail is not so bad. It's it's, it's pretty cool. Um, this is like that soft. It's it's not polystyrene. I'm not sure what this is, but it, it's it's kind of soft. So um, I don't, I might want to wash it off first, just to make sure if there's there's any uh, mold release agents. But this is Minmay in her civilian dress, and uh, it's cute. All right. So, hey, speaking of which, this is really cool. Check this out. Okay, so I got this little pencil board. Um, in Japanese, it's called shitajiki. Um, kids write on these, and this is actually not that good of quality. But check this out. So this is um, evidence here that Ari and Imai were kind of working together uh, with the uh, the Macross stuff here. So, like for example. Um, the the destroids, for example. Now these are one one hundred scale. Now this is the same scale as the missile phalanx. But the phalanx was actually done by um, Imai. So Imai did one one hundred destroids, um, two of them. They did the phalanx, which I completed, and also the um, the tomahawk. Now the um, RE they made the the Defender, the Spartan, and 
Um, I, yeah, I guess just those two. Now, there's also the, the big, huge monster. But what they did was they, they kind of worked it out so they weren't really stepping on each other's toes. And uh, so, like, one would do, uh, for example, the monster in uh, a certain scale, and then the other one would do a, a, uh, in another scale. Um, Bandai has acquired the molds to the Imai kits, uh, but they didn't acquire the molds to the RDE kits. Which is unfortunate, because um, I'm going to take a look at this later here, but um, I'll, I'll show you why in just a moment here. So now check this out. Now, once upon a time, they had Macross colors. Uh, I don't... Who made this? Aqueous Macross color. Um, I think maybe this was GSI Krios, I suppose, who did this. I'm not sure. But that's really cool. So, of course, everybody's familiar with Gundam colors, and of course there's also Yamato colors now, too. Um, everybody knows Gundam and Yamato, but back once upon a time they had Macross, so Macross was pretty huge back in the day for for, um, for plastic models. This is really cool. I think this kit goes for a bit much, unfortunately. Uh, this is the, the Macross uh, factory. This has been since re-released, I think a couple years ago, Bandai re-released this. Uh, I can get this for like 3,000 yen um, at my local hobby shop, but it's just so, just, it, it's big, and I don't, I don't know. It's cool if you want to just do like an instant diorama, but, you know, whatever. So, um, here are the RDE, uh, they have different flavors of the, um, the Regolt battle pods. There's like the heavy missiles and light missiles. Uh, they got Super Valkyrie, etc. Now, I have some of these. These are really great. These are the the, the Zentradi warships. Imai did, like, a set of, like, uh, the four stages of the 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 the, uh, the Valkyrie transformation. It's really cool. On the other side here. You have the, the Macross itself. There's the male power armor. Um, I never really cared for that. The female power armor is really awesome, but this is meh. I don't think it's uh, that great. Of course, the Imai, the, the variable Valkyrie that Bandai has uh, re-released as well. Uh, here's the uh, the Glaug, the officer's battle pod. This goes for a bit of money. The armored Valkyrie. Uh, I'm pretty sure this this has not been re-released by Bandai. Yeah, it's an Imai mold, but yeah, uh, they, they have the Macross, the Storm Attacker mode. Actually, it doesn't look that great. <laughs> um, of course, Ardi and Imai did different sizes. I think Imai, yeah, did the 1-5,000 scale. Ardi did the 1-8,000 scale, but I don't know which one is being pictured here. Um, yeah, so Imai did the 172, whereas Ardi did the 1-100 scale. And here's the Tomahawk. Imai did the 172 while the RDE did the 1100 scale. You can get the, the 172 ones easily enough because they've been re-released by, by Bandai. Uh, what else? Uh, you know, here's the, uh, the Battle Pod. RDE did the regular Battle Pod. And check out the, the prices on these things. Like 300 yen for this? Jeez. Look at that. The, the Quadulin Row. The female power armor is only 500 yen. That's that's amazing. That is just gosh. Yeah, this is not. <laughs> this is definitely not 300 yen. It goes for like uh, more than 10 times that amount. But anyhow, I just wanted to show you this. This is really cool. So um, yeah, neat stuff. Really cool. I, I I picked that up on a whim on Yahoo Auctions Japan. All right, so I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to assume that you have seen the the Spartan. I'm sorry, the, the missile phalanx build. If not, um, I'll just recap for you. Um, okay, so the RD has polycaps. The EMI doesn't. It just has just plastic. In pla you know, sticking plastic pegs into plastic sockets. This has polycaps. I'm not sure if I like the proportions better. I, I think maybe 
in general, the EMI kits might have better proportions than the RDE kits. However, the RDE has polycaps, and that's really neat. Um, I don't know what this is about. This might be a little catalog here. Uh, here we go. This is really neat. Here are the the decals. Now, the, fa the fascinating thing that you get with this that you do not get with the EMI kits is that it has like this little, like a, I, w I would call it nose art for a lack of a better term, but they have like these, like a, like a squadron insignia here. And you can see it depicted in the picture, if I remember right. Um, Alright, I was wrong. Uh, one of the other kits, you could see it in, in the actual picture. But, that is freaking cool. I, I like that. You might did not do that. Uh, you do not have those, like, those uh, Ichijo molds. There's no decals for those. They're going to be hard molded into the plastic. So, the Imai kits had both hard molded and decals but here you're only going to get the hard molded which is I think way better so you got them here and you got them here as well the feet have better articulation it seems but the proportions are not quite the same uh, we'll just have to start building this guy and uh, get a feel for what it's like so yeah this is really cool so with the polycaps, I imagine the the limbs and such, you can just uh, snap them off and paint them separately. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Got the Super Valk. You can, uh, I think, what is, like an, what is this, an order form? I don't know, but that's really cool. Look at that. So they have all the different, you got uh, Lin Min Mei in a swimsuit. That's awesome. I mean, who doesn't like that, right? Uh, RDE also did, like, uh, large figures as well of uh, the Macross figures, uh, the, the Macross characters. Um, Imai also did some, too. Uh, I could show you those another time, I suppose. But, yeah, these are pretty cool. Uh, it, actually, if I remember right, the, the detail... I think the shapes of the faces for their larger, their larger, uh, the figure kits are not quite that great, but I mean they're they're not bad for their time, but yeah, they could be better. So here we go. They are one sixth scale. Now I would, the one I want is this. I, I this one you see a lot more often. This is Min May from the show. This is her stage outfit, I believe, from Macross. Do you remember Love? If I remember right. I would like to get this. Maybe the shape of the face is not that great. Um, the Miria one is... I don't know, that might be kind of cool to get to. Um, they also have Schoolgirl Minmei as well. I had this, actually. I had one of these things. But I sold it when I went to Japan. Um, are you for the 15th anniversary they had like these these figures they were like toys and they came with a card and with like a little miniature figure and such i had uh it was um melia's red i was a super valkyrie the vf1j head and it was in gerwalk mode and i i sold it when i moved to japan not bad it was, it was pretty cool. I, I forgot that RDE made that. So, what else we got here? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, that's great. Look at that. That's beautiful. Swimsuit. That might be kind of cool. Um, yeah, PVC. High quality model. Yeah. They kind of go for a bit. Some of them are rarer than other ones. Like, I think this one is rarer than this one. But, uh, yeah, 16 centimeters tall. Pretty cool. Alright, enough of that. Uh, let's just get started building on some of this stuff. Let's look at the instructions here. You start with the guns, and you got the polycaps. Looks like you're uh, putting in the polycaps here. 
So yeah, you can assemble the the arms, the, the gun arms, and put things into place later. Paint them separately and then assemble them. Uh, I believe um, the the EMI kit was like that too, actually. But with polycaps, though, it's, it's going to be pretty nice, I think. So yeah. All right, and here's here's the final product here. So the proportions, you know, we'll see. But it, look at the articulation of the feet, though. It looks um, look like it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. All right, so let's uh, we'll, we'll start cutting stuff off the runner and uh, get started. All right, so there is a little bit of flash. Dun, 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 dun. Ah. So what I can do is. Uh, kind of whittle it along a little bit. Flash! Dun, 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 dun. Ah. Savior of the universe! My, my wife and I, we used to sing that to each other. <laughs> I should remember seeing that movie as a kid, also. Alright, so. Tommy me cement. I forget, did that movie come out before... Empire Strikes Back? I can't remember. I saw it in the theater. Um, so anyhow, okay, so this is all gluey gluey. Gluey gluey! <laughs> now I wanna sniff some glue. Now I wanna have something to do. All the kids wanna sniff some glue. All the kids want to have something to do. I've been listening to the Ramones a lot lately. Oh, God bless the Ramones. They were great. Alright, so, um... There we go. Pretty cool. And what's also really nice is... Check this out. Let me see if I can get a toothpick here. Look how deep that is. That's, that's really great. Sometimes you don't get that. You just get like a shallow little hole and you have to drill it to make it look like it, like an actual cannon barrel. But this one's pretty nice and, you know, it's shadowy inside there so you don't have to worry about it um, looking dumb. So that's great. Uh, for this part here, it says to use one of the small polycaps. And that's what this is. Let me get my scissors. There. Okay. Now this should go into here like so. Alright, now let's go back to the glue. Now I wanna sniff some glue. Now I wanna have something to do. I mean the Beatles were okay I guess. I mean at least when they first came along but um later Beatles, all the hippie crap. Sorry. Don't care for them. Um, I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm opposed to listening to it, but I mean, I mean, they they kind of killed rock and roll. Um, I think the Rolling Stones did a lot better with the British Invasion, um, the Who, bands like that, Beatles, yeah, so and so, I guess, whatever. Uh, the cool thing about the Ramones, though, is that um, and they came along and they kind of yanked rock and roll back on track where it belonged. And uh, I really respect that. Alright, here we go. And so I'm not going to attach this just yet, but this goes into here like that. So, first of all, I want to sand this down, make it look smoother. 
But there you go. So moving along with the build process, uh, you'll see that it's clearly visible. The poly cap is on this end here. So this part here, it uh, goes into the hole. And then this part here, I, I wish this could have been designed a little bit more efficiently, a little bit more sturdily. But uh, I think uh, what I need to do is like kind of glue just this part here and just a little dab into that little hole and hopefully not get any glue on the actual piece. But um, when this is solid, it should... See, that's the problem. Uh, this should move like so, okay? And then, you know, the arm should, should twist up and down as well. Now, to continue any further, I don't, I don't want to do that because um, I, I want to paint this first and then assemble this. I'll have to just kind of glue it here. Um, but, if, you know, if, if I paint it here, then I'll have to worry about um, not getting enough paint around the corner and such. So, it's a little bit of a disappointed, uh, disappointing part of the engineering, but I'll see if I can work my way around that. Um, for the time being, what I would like to do is, you see this here? Now it's got some flash on there, and I'll just leave that alone for now, because um, it, it's best to uh, take care of the flash later, I think, because I don't want to start whittling away and ending up with any gaps. So this fits together fairly well, and then the arms will stick into the, in, into the holes here. So there's nothing inside to keep it in place. You just... Um, kind of fit it in there, I suppose. So, what I should do, actually, is make sure that's nice and clean. Alright, alright, here we go. So, let's get plenty of glue along here. And I'm um, just making sure, looking at the instructions, and I'm not missing anything. So this, these, these two pieces should fit together just fine. Uh, I guess I'm just kind of used to um, the way a, a, a typical like, like a Gundam would would fit together. But um, this is not like that. It's a little bit different. So this is RD. It's not Bandai. So. Just make sure we get plenty of glue. There. All right, let's uh, let's fit this together. Okay. I think I got some on my fingers here. Yuck. Okay. So now that this is in the place, what I suppose I could do is get plenty of the the thin cement and make sure it kind of sucks into there into the gap. I'll probably want to putty this up a little bit too before I before I do any painting. And of course sand. Do a lot of sanding. But you see right there, I just kind of pushed it back into place there. Um, let's get plenty of glue in here. Get plenty of glue in here. I'm almost out of both of my glues, actually. I got some of the, the lemon smelling stuff. So I'm looking forward to using that. So that, that's one thing I really miss about the tester's crap, is uh, the, the nice lemon smell to it. Now you got these little pieces here. Ah. Alright, let's just glue this around the perimeter here. There. And... Uh, gushing... This gets put into place here. Like so. And uh, the next part, although I'm not going to try forcing it right now, because I want to sand this away first. But this part goes here, like so. And then there's a top that goes up here, but I'm not going to worry that right, about that right now, because um, this video has been going on for fairly long. 
and uh, I'm just going to end this right here. But before I go, you know, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I, I, I teach English, right? That, that That's part of my job. And um, I'm, I'm forced to sing these really terrible pop songs. And um, here's one, for example. You know, the song itself isn't too obnoxious, but this is Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. So this is the typical thing I get in class, you know, and I have to stand there and try to pretend to care about this crap. But um, I'll call attention to, um, to some lyrics here. Look at this. Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad, I missed you so bad, I missed you so, so bad. Now, this is the, the woman who came up with that, uh, that really ingenious song, the, the song that goes, I really, 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 really like you. And, um, uh, okay, so it has Tom Hanks in the music video, so I guess, you know, that's cool, because who doesn't like Tom Hanks, I guess. But, um, I really, 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 really like you is how the song goes. And I'm like, really? Did did, did you come up with that, that, that lyrics by yourself? I mean, did you, did you write that? I mean, did you have someone help you? So, I mean, look at this song here. All right. Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad. Now, this is really interesting because, how, you know, how can you miss somebody that you've never met before? So, as I was singing this song, I, I kind of stumbled upon, like, a revelation. So, you know, typically you wouldn't be able to miss somebody that you've never met before. You know, if they haven't come into your life at this point yet, there's no way you could have missed them. So it shows you that there's something deeper behind pop music and something far more insidious, okay? Now, this here is conclusive evidence that Carly Rae Jepsen is a pan-dimensional entity that's not confined to a linear temporal existence like the rest of us uh, human beings, as I would say. So uh, she can somehow exist beyond our, our linear temporal progression through life so that, that she can exist in both the, the past, present, and future simultaneously. This can only indicate one thing. Flying saucers!